Buried and gone. Finally, they get it when they ready. Not because so we did it, they done it, but then it's funny to get with it. Buried and gone. Finally, they get it when they ready. Not the haters acting up. Man, they funny be all in my face, they be faking we bud What do they want me to say? I got no interest in being a waste I make it a minute, they faking and feeding Can't wait for the weekend and I'm gonna fade Whether I'm faking I'm in love Or what the haters I can love Make it a minute, they funny be all in my face They be faking and feeding Can't wait for the weekend and I'm gonna fade What do they want me to say? I got no interest in being a waste I make it a minute, they funny be all in my face They be faking and feeding Can't wait for the weekend and I'm gonna fade Whether I'm faking I'm in love What is going on here? 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 I'd rather have no sound than wrong sound. <laughs> Oops, and we're live. Commodity, meaning I am what they own. Only live for the property. I wanna buy me a mini a home. Trying to win a monopoly, y'all. Y'all probably just end up alone. Kept the meaning of American dreaming until I am barely buried and gone. Why do they get it when they ain't ready? Not be concerned with who did it or done it, but then it's funny to get with a hundred or some of that. What do they want from me? Yeah, hey, I come to dance. Hit the corn, do this money, whipping the nanny, yeah, maybe you're dead. They be crazy not to love me, but them haters acting nut. Man, they funny, be all in my face, they be faking, we bud What do they want me to say? I got no interest in being in the waste I make it a minute, they faking and feeding Can't wait for the weekend or not for their face Whether or not they got a lot of dough All they can do got a lot of hoes Making dinner service, sloppy joes They can't get the monkey off of their shoulders Is it just me and the world getting colder With people trying to cope with nobody sober And got a overdose and until it's over How to blow with nobody is coming over All them killers hitting under the motor We're folks within the government of the show They be lying to fall Right, party line, left, right, party line, left, right, party line, yeah, many good company. Only for the afterlife for those who were chosen for action. 
acting right, acting chest at night, no appetite, epitaph caption says he led a happy life, oh, sacrifice, pets in life, matter of fact, he ain't never even had a fight, I'll pass, cause that's at least half a lie, not as the peppers he advertises.
Yeah. Uh. How long the souls wait to reincarnate and pass through the astral after they part ways? We're here towards so arms and legs, the warm embrace, the loved ones carbon based. And is it your call to make or to draw with fate? Stars in the constellation, or to accommodate your denomination? The world based on your patience, God of the karmic laws of nature, or some sort of combination. What I'm saying, maybe we don't wait for death just to be with those who left us. It may seem so complex, but the flesh of my flesh can be one of my ancestry and tethered together by an evident predilection. Ever the better a pedigree with our affection, embedded genetically an energetic connection. Seems odd to me, I can tell probably by the soul of no gun held to the project. And so as it goes a few years back, I saw it as I proposed to get in contact with the last on the phone. She was glad cause she was at the fat alone. Passion prone, we chat and bone, lived in each other's laps until the morning. Then that went on and on and on and till we need in three weeks she peaks and we skied on the tween sheets My heart sinks with each beat breathe deep Then I start to sink in the rim sleep And before me up here's the scene Mama's house everything pristine A dream, a vision of the future Hello and welcome to our wonderful program tonight. We're very pleased to have you here. My name is Indra Mungal, and on behalf of the Asian Art Museum, I'd like to welcome you to this thrilling premiere. We're very, very excited about it. The music and videos are, are extraordinary. So we wanted to let you know that the museum is open. We welcome you. Please come visit. We've got incredible new exhibitions. There's, I think, three or four new exhibitions. Check out our website. Get your advance tickets because we are at 50% capacity, but we'd love to see you. Also, the Asian Art Museum sits on the San Francisco Peninsula and is located within the unceded territories of the Ohlone peoples, Ramatush and the coastal Miwok. We remember their continued connection to this region and give thanks to them as we live, work, and learn on their traditional homeland. We offer our respect to their elders and to all indigenous peoples past and present. About the situation we're all experiencing now with anti-Asian violence. The United States has seen two disturbing trends, the radicalization of white supremacists and increasing levels of violence against people of Asian descent. We acknowledge that the most vulnerable Asian Americans, women, elders, immigrants, and service workers bear the brunt of this violence the Asian Art Museum calls for an end to this violence and urges more people to take action to protect our Asian American community. Now, I want to introduce our folks that are joining us tonight. And I would like to mention this is a release party for Ensemble McNowish's new album, Death Become Life, and premiere of five music films documenting the recording sessions for the album, including dance footage filmed at the Asian Art Museum and other 
various Bay locales. This is presented tonight, co-presented with the Yerba Buena Garden Festival, who commissioned three of the pieces. And uh, we love partnering with Yerba Buena Garden Festival. They are really an important Bay Area cultural institution. So uh, let's see, is everybody, yeah, everybody's on, so I'd like to introduce them. So we have Joan Kim, composer and pianist Joan Kim began his formal training in composition at Berkeley College of Music in Boston. He graduated summa cum laude with a bachelor's in music in composition. And he continued his education in composition at the San Francisco Conservatory of Music from which he received a master's of music. After a, su a successful performance of a novelty piece which fe featured an MC and chamber music ensemble while completing his master's degree at the Conservatory of Music, Johan had a profound shift in the direction of his writing. He felt that he found a way out of the stifling contemporary concert music aesthetic in his new way of composition. Joan crystallized his ideas into something he calls method sampling. You'll hear more about it. A principle borrowing of borrowing or sampling of rationales from related as well as unrelated fields, then reframing them into one's own system. In 2010, Joan recruited his best friend from college, who you'll meet tonight, Christopher Nicholas, who is now uh, Ensemble McNawush's executive director, and they pushed the project forward in this very serious way. Since then, his musical laboratory has attracted some of the most excellent classical musicians and MCs in the Bay Area and abroad, while gaining national attention from nationally renowned outlets. And Joanna is represented by Opus, Opus 3 Artists. Christopher Nicholas, there's Christopher, received a dual bachelor's of music in songwriting and vocal performance from Berkeley College of Music and a master's of music in jazz studies from the University of North Texas. After joining Joan in 2010 to co-found and run Ensemble McNawush, they've had numerous features, collaborations and commissions nationally and internationally, and there's no stopping them now. Sandman, our MC Sandman. Prior to releasing a so solo album entitled The Art of Dreaming, Sandman was cultivated as an MC during his involvement with the dynamic hip hop group, The Attic. He, his association with the group began as a teen and eventually blossomed into something formal. In 20, 2005, the teen, oh, the group, I'm sorry, he, was, he began as a teen, but he wasn't a teen then. So in 2005, the group released the album Jungle Electric. Sandman has shared a stage with KRS-One, Dead Pre Prez, E-40, and Zion I, and many more. A veteran of performing his rock stages around the country and shined at legendary, legendary venues in front of sold out crowds. Sandman joined Ensemble McNawush in 2013. And now I'm going to turn it over to Marcelo Aviles, Director of Programming for Yerba Buena Garden Festival, the folks who commissioned many of the works. Take it away, Marcelo. Thank you so much, Indra. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, it's nice to uh, feel your presence. I can't see you all. Um, but uh, just welcoming you, welcoming you tonight. And, uh, you know, the last year has been real tough. Um, on a lot of fronts, and it's been uh, it's been great uh, for the festival to redouble our efforts to um, and 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 uh, maintain our commitment to partnering with organizations like the Asian Art Museum and to supporting work uh, and new work uh, from artists like uh, Ensemble McNawush. Um, and so we're real proud of that commitment and. Um, uh, and we're looking forward to seeing you all in the near future. It looks like we're going to be able to uh, gather in some in some form in this next year. And so we're really looking forward to that. And um, I won't take up too much of your time. Uh, so I'll turn it over to um, Ensemble McNawush. Oh my 
my body On the search for somebody just to watch her Who then dropped in from the right side of the poppy On the concrete, now I'm Aki Yeah, said man, it's got me, got me living with intensive care Get it out, see an infinite stretch of the imagination beside me The past behind And with this is we arriving on the scene to be received With impeccable timing Like a shot of epinephrine stuck up into your thighs Can have a fight or flight response Partner, I'm so long So if you fly, then tonight we launch and be gone Upon the reed side of this song And I state the lines of which I base my odyssey on Got a problem, my mind I got a monopoly on And I, shh, be quiet, the prodigy's on Are y'all caught off guard? Cause I'm called classic. Oh my god, if I got passion, yeah, like the passion of the Christ. A passion for my life. I'm damn crafty with a knife, and I'm finna cut up just to have it in a fight. With surgical precision, putting salmon in your pipes. Cause they talk about me and bone around me. Hating is washed up and soft is downy. It's time to crown me. The reins and reach I aim to eat. Play for keeps and face the beast to take the streets until the Jake retreats. Hell's fine, yet the heavens favor me. Making way out of the East Bay hastily. Hatefully, but when Eamon makes us sweet, it's made to eat. We only take from all 50 states to eat. Escaviche, shrimp, and Malaysian peas made to feast. we waitress and maitre d'. Needless to say, they need to know they place capiche. Especially if they ain't paying me It's the creme de la creme may say la vie I'm from the land of the oak I wish a motherfucker would I'm feeling great, feeling good Dancing with the stars Jupiter and Mars That's, that's how high I set the bar I'm feeling great right now I'm feeling great right now. I wish it, I wish you, I wish you, I wish you would.
Okay. Hello, Hi. everyone. I'm Chris Nicholas. Juwan Kim. And I am Sandman. All right, so uh, I'll be um, asking us a, a, a few questions um, so you all get a, a better take of what you, what you saw and what you heard. Um, so, uh, Juwan, can you tell us a little bit about what we just saw, Mozart, Mozart on Joy, and can you tell us a little bit about your creative process? Sure. So this is the first, uh, first movement of the uh, commission pieces, a uh, suite called Fountainheads. And then um, uh, this piece, I basically remember a bunch of pieces that I, uh, I've heard and studied from Mozart and um, use them to make a deconstruction, which is the, uh, which is kind of, kind of connected to method sampling, which is a way of sort of having a half compositional technique, which is like a, a theme and variation and uh, half of it would be process of hip hop, which is a sampling. So, um, and as for method sampling, it's, it's a rationale as Indra said, um, it's, a, it's an idea to sample or borrow foreign rationales, and by reframing them, you come up with a new system. And in what I did, it, it goes something like this. In the very beginning, I was trying to make hip hop music using only classical techniques and uh, classical instruments. And if you do that, you don't actually end up with a hip hop piece, but something different. So that was the whole beginning of our um, sort of adventure to this kind of <laughs> world of what are we doing and what is this? <laughs> yeah. And that being said, we're gonna move on to our next piece, uh, Beethoven on Struggle. I got no words about how we got a verse Around the world the same song But now I got a verse While the streets holler A corpse leaps out of her soul Shit is me while my dreams gotten worse Need to be where we need not Keep dodging blurbs Thoughts of me shot Bleeding on the triage thirst We die first Faces of the murdered be on shirts The quick and the dead That we peel off curbs The streets need those Knees knocking the meat Walking in need of heroes A young chief has got one chambered In the heat that he took Why every knob is going to play the boss when they ain't gone all in and ain't paid the cost or the fee? Hated that I made my peace. They beat to their belly for me, still pray through. Say please, maybe I'll save you a seat at the table where I break bread, making a speech, saying peace to the lovers unable to please. Hey, there's no shade on your name in the street. Hey. Light bears, they trying to scare us like night terrors, hoping we might error like JD and American me. When they make it there, they wanna live vicariously. Dog you like a terrier and carry the leash like police who dare to conquer peace, carry the beast. Where you sleep with the fishes in the barrier reef? Where are we who care deep, buried in grief? Be wary the evil. It's barely illegal for them to carry the heat. Dare to be lethal, barbarian ego. Scared of the people who made America great. Dare to be equal. Pete, though, we need more folk to keep the focus. We won't see no Mia Copa from the culprits. Power broker and xenophobes misleading the voters. Fear mongering theologians speaking in the pulpit. Whoa, need to hold us close. We need to hold us close. Coast to coast, these boys, they want to get us to go. Give 
driven, they never mention them and don't get to win them with their sentiment. Committed to be in the beginning, they're thinking they're getting the benefit. It's like to be living in time, it's limited, fight is imminent, true, but you'll find it within the bright and the infinite. Like to be given by you, they don't know what they do, don't know what is true. When they try to divide us, provide for the few, they don't know what they do, don't know what is true. When they try to divide us, provide for the few, they gon' lose, they gon' lose. In the bubble, we're up, jumps the mother for lump sums, a jump changes on and fuck you. Taught not to crumble under another man's knuckles, but not how to stand when them boys wanna bump you. Running the land, wanting not what Uncle Sam wants you. My pops was a veteran and a functioning drunk too. Funny as a child, the conclusions that you come to. Try to gather your senses, find some shit to numb you. Thumb through life while the streets run red. Everything you have to say remains unsaid. Tell me with vampires at each other's necks, hung head, not living, just undead. Okay, so that's the second movement. Yeah, so uh, Joan, so we just heard Mozart on Joy, Beethoven on Struggle. Our next one that's gonna be coming up um, is called Bach on Transcendence. So can you tell us um, why you chose these composers and what the theme is? Yeah, so the name Fountainhead, it's like the origin, right? Um, so these, big three composers, so-called big three. Um, they are basically the one that what we call common practice period, which is like early 17th century to uh, 17th century to early 20th century. And then they kind of created this, um, you know, a lot of repertoires that we like now. Obviously the music has been, you know, composed after that. Uh, but the effect of uh, Western music, it's basically in that era of what we call common practice period. So the, um, I mean, as I said, I chose all these pieces out of memory. So sometimes I'll look at these scores at the end. I mean, it was surprising how, how much I changed it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so um, I don't know whether you've heard this, but you know, the first and second piece are, pieces are connected. Mm -hmm. So yeah. the string harmonic that ends with the Mozart and then the Beethoven and takes back. over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the third movement would have something that you can recognize if you actually can recognize you can say yeah i did recognize <laughs> yeah. i will totally ignore you <laughs> <laughs> okay so yeah. um uh, let's
let's move on to our next piece, Bach on Transcendence. Yes. yes. to look around and count your blessings looked around decided to live and dispense with all the stressing have you looked up and seen everything beautiful like my daughter like my daughter she went from in utero to writing computer code and truth be told I didn't even want no kids but it's funny how you once don't align with an untold bliss
Okay. Wow, we're walking. <laughs> Being so, very dramatic. Yeah, I know. I was like, what are we doing? <laughs> 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 the Shout out to Matt Bowman, by the way. Yeah, Matt Bowman and uh, Tosco Rivola, uh, Greylock Studios. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. You are filmmakers. Uh, before I ask you a question, I want to actually talk about the last three pieces, which is the Fountainhead Suite. And um, as you can notice, that there are these uh, punctuation at the very end of these choir sections. And they, they have this Greek word, um, you know, ataraxia, apathia, and the pneumonia. And they all correlate to um, pretty much like equanimity. And uh, the reason I put that in there is that as I was writing, as we all have experienced, all, all kinds of things were happening, not just the pandemic. Um, so. In, in a way, the writing was a refuge for me last year, and I thought I would express, uh, I would actually express a moment of sort of relaxation uh, in a virtue that way. And um, the last piece that's coming up, that's going to be coming up, has a connection with these uh, concept. Um, there's a, in Chinese writing, there, there's going to be a koan there, which has, which is coming from Zen and uh, Stoics. Uh, are very connected to Zen and apathia is obviously a stoic, stoic concept. And, and on the, in, in the counterpart of it would be uh, Epicureans, they have ataraxia, which are the same kind of things as if just like Zen Buddhism and then tantric Buddhism are sort of like a opposite end of the same kind of uh, emancipation of soul, right? So my question to you, Chris, is that how was the recording? Was it easy? Was it like quick? Was it slow? Was it? The recording was not easy. Um, it took about a week or so. Um, and um, uh, we had, we took mul multiple days. We recorded um, the winds and the, I think we did the, the strings first or the winds first. E either way, they, they, were, they were all sectioned off. Um, so we had, Wins, um, um, uh, our, our our amazing soprano, uh, and Ed, our our MC, come um, one one day at separate times and record their prop, record their their chunks. And then we had our string players come uh, record record their their chunk um, with the drummer sectioned off. Um, and then we met separately to mix everything down. And so everything was was recorded in real. Time. So, um, so that that's why you see a performance footage more so than really like super streamlined music video, because um, this was all real time and there was really no punch ins, no <laughs> no real edits. Um, this was as real as you can get um, uh, due to the whole pandemic situation. So, you, you real time, you mean like one or two takes? Right? Yes, so. one or two takes. Um, like I said, mm -hmm. uh, there's really no punch ins here. Um, uh, Sandman was really amazing. He did everything pretty much. <laughs> two hours. <laughs> the two hours. Shout out just, Sandman. Just kept moving on. But um, so we don't run out of time. We'd like to move on to our, our next song, Who Would Be Born? And then we're also going to introduce um, Sandman to, to answer some questions as well. Enough to stop showing their bluff. They're throwing a fit. I'm holding my nuts. They talk falsehoods, but they say not true. I poke holes in the story, watch the plans fall through. Bye bye, salute. You the only one to blame for what you fall prey to. Yeah, y'all been good. But it ain't stopping demons from collecting, they do. And they won't take the cash or pardon you till the millstone bed. And the cheese all blue sad. Been had in the pits like your dad is bread. And your fix ain't fixing that. Your ex wife split with your cash and women ain't hitting your back and in a bit of madness you tripping the traffic cameras get to clicking and flashing now your pics on the internet look at that you're looking the Nash and look at the caption it says look at this has been so what are you famous for can't show your face no place to go get medicated though shit faced and wasted slow don't know your friends from foes Get shit faced and waste it so. What are you famous for? So what are you famous for? Don't know your friends from foe. Don't know your friends from foe. Can't 
you sure your face no place to go? Can you tell us a little bit about the theme of that song that we just heard, Who Will Be Born? Uh, the, th uh, the theme of that song. So um, uh, what really began my writing or me thinking about what I was going to write to the song was a quote that Juan gave me. And really, I, I, you know, you have, I have to apologize because really I don't remember <laughs> the first part of that quote, quote right? But it was, uh, who, who would be born must first destroy a world. And what I took that to mean is that 
you know, to, to, to be yourself, to be true to yourself, you kind of have to deconstruct all these things that you've been taught um, about success, about um, how, how you have ability or what you, what creativity, why you're creative. Uh, Cause there was also a time where, you know, there's a, there's a point to, uh, you know, uh, beginning with the, the group, uh, the attic, when it kind of fell apart and I was like, well, maybe I just shouldn't do this, you know? Um, but then kind of coming back and kind of deconstructing, okay, like I may never have any sort of, uh, uh, you know, get any sort of adherent or, you know, um, acclaim for, for what I do, but it's something that's true for me. So it's kind of like I had to deconstruct something to even keep going on with my own creativity um and in writing and, and being an MC. Um and so uh what a lot of them is about is you know I, I asked this question myself like what are you famous for? You know um what do you what do you want out of this uh expression that you have you know is it is it just to to for people to pay attention to you which I think a lot of when I began that's that was my attraction to it. You know I began performing when I was 18 years old in bars, you know, where they had to put a, you know, a wristband on my, my, you know, on me to like indicate like he can't drink, you know. <laughs> um, and a lot of my attraction to it was like, oh, look at all these people paying attention to me. And then there was a point where that just stopped. And then I had to kind of rediscover like, okay, this is something that's actually true to you um, and, and, and what you do. So kind of abstracting yourself from all of these ideas that you had prior to really, you know, uh, actualize. And uh, th going uh, going with that, we're going to go to our last piece for the evening called Everything Returns to One, and then we'll come back to Sandman. <laughs> Ashes, dust to dust, been meaning to ask and rather discuss what happens to us after we take on the task of having compassion and love. It matters for what? Does what it matter for actually happen to matter enough? For having to suffer the path of the lover and loving each other no matter the what, when, where, or the why. Many men would ever they lie. Try to drive you into despair beyond repair. Paralyze you to clarify having one love is rare and lies. Least they say peace and grace is the easiest way to paradise. Paradise, wearing lies, they divide, they divide, but that's unverified. Why, why, maybe that's why, why everyone's scared to try. Swearing by the terror so much they don't even care for life. I'm in despair, wondering just how it is they bear the cries. Not caring to share the sky, I hope that we're in time. Change the paradigm, we're prepared to repair the perilous when they resign. Everything returns to one. Setting moon and rising sun. Everything returns to one. Setting moon and rising sun. The love of your mother, your brother, your sister, your partner, your papa, your lover, in order to care that you got for another. So often it's just a condition of love. Someone who's giving you something. My guess is connection is why you would utter the words I love you. We yet to discover that we're all connected with love to love us, love us, love us. No, us first, the other. Hope that you discover. Thinking about the days you're going to roll on the back. If you never get to come together on a bash, say everything turns to one. Setting moon and rising sun. Everything turns to one Setting moon and rising sun
Okay. Okay. And um, so our last question, um, Sandman, can you tell us a little bit about your creative process with EMN? And um, this kind of dovetails into our Q and A. Yeah, a couple of questions in Q and A. Yeah. So the this creative yeah. process. So can, yeah, can, uh, Sandman, can you, can you tell us? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it generally begins with with Juwan, uh, you know, you know, he's usually well the conversations like, hey, I want to write this piece and, and this is the uh, theme, uh, you know, this is what the piece is about. Um, that's usually when my my writing process kind of begins, uh, you know, and it usually begins with me just jotting lines and ideas and then he gives me the actual music and I say this all the time and sorry, Juwan, but so I don't actually get to hear the live music a lot of times when I'm actually writing. What he'll send me is a, a, a really, really bad MIDI uh, <laughs> production of his writing. Um, and well, mind you, when I say bad, I mean like the soprano that's on it sounds like this really hollow uh, eight bit flute, you know? <laughs> and so like, I, I, I uh, don't necessarily get the, the full breadth of the music, but I get an idea of it. Um, and then that's when I actually start the writing uh, and, and fin but the writing itself isn't actually finished until we perform it. Um, because when I actually hear the music, you know, uh, I, I do my best to become almost like an is uh, alongside the music. So I do augment and change my writing up a little bit when I actually hear the music. And so this, this uh, uh, recording session where we did three pieces, it was my first time, or three commissioned pieces. It was my first time actually hearing the music. And so even there, live in the studio, I was doing some adjustment to, you know, really feel like I was, you know, working together uh, uh, with, with the instruments um, and the composition as a whole. Thank you. And um, so as we're going into this uh, Q&A, um, so one of the questions, uh, which Ed just answered, uh, Sandman just answered. Uh, he was intrigued by Sandman's lyrics and uh, he wanted to know if he was given any direction or topic or subject. Um, and also um, uh, the process that, that we just spoke about, um, uh, how Sandman uh, builds his lyrics on top of the music. Um, another question that came in this one, um, is, um, let's see. How, how do you decide which classical piece to incorporate in your work? Oh, that's very simple. Any work that became public domain, arcane. So that's it. And there we have it. Generally, they don't have <laughs> any legal problems and representation. A lot of people, people are deceased. RIP. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, this is terrible. But yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I like classical music, just so you know. I don't hate classical music. I just don't agree with a lot of them now. That's all. And um, uh, looking forward to a live concert. So yes, we do have some live concerts uh, scheduled, especially for this year. Um, we are going to be playing at uh, Reno Art Town in July. Um, and we're finalizing some things uh, next year for Washington. Uh, we'll tell you those details as they get more and more solid. And let's see, going on, uh, this is a creative process, we already answered that one. Um, uh, we'd love to see some hip hop ballet in the visuals. It seems they would be a perfect match. Any thought of that? Yeah, well, certainly we're totally open to do uh, different kind of collaboration. And the reason that we incorporate turf dancing is that simply turf dance actually was originated from here. And not only that, turf dance method sampled hip hop because if you look at the movement, it's very you know, graceful and it has a lot of, in some points, uh, not only hip hop, there's contortion in it as well. So there are different aspects of uh, dance and movement arts that is uh, sampled there. Okay, um, next question. Um, do you work on several projects at once and do some projects take longer than others? Do you ever have writer's block? Well, I generally don't have writer's block uh, because I think that I don't take myself too seriously. I just write. And um, I think it also came that, you know, when I was training in my undergrad, I had 
a teacher that encouraged me to write without instruments. So I would just write on desk with pen and paper, uh, pen and paper, and I wouldn't even use pencil because I wanted to really rely on the internal hearing. So, and the way it works, it's kind of like reading books. If you read books, you know, you actually hear what you're reading and you do the same thing with the notes, basically, uh -huh. so. Cool. And uh, then last question, uh, Joan, can you expand on your disagreement with classical music? Oh, wow. Where to begin? <laughs> <laughs> Where do we start? Yeah. In the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that now what happened, uh, especially 1960s, all this avant-garde, even before the second Vienna school, um, of this idea of top-down sort of musicians that are enlightened, that's going to educate the mass of this new musical language. We, we, we must continuously sort of push the you know, envelope by top down uh, is, is obviously crazy and false idea. And the antithesis of that would be pop music, which, is, which essentially came out of black music mm -hmm. that actually came from bottom up. And mm -hmm. if you think about the, the, the gap of um, complexity between sort of Dixieland to bebop, that mm -hmm. is just wide. And same thing is happening in hip hop. And we believe that we're part of that sort of quantum jump of uh, mm -hmm. concert music. Obviously we're doing concert music, but so there's a healthy dose of hip hop here, uh, not just represented by Sandman, but like we're all like kind of punk rock. Of <laughs> things. Uh, question from YouTube. Um, how did you all meet up and decide to work together? Uh, that is a, that's gonna be a long answer, but we can answer it very, very shortly. Started in 2010, Juwan and I were, were roommates before that in Berkeley College of Music. Uh, in 2010, he asked me to move out here after I was finished with my master's to help him with the ensemble. I did, uh, and we've been going ever since. Um, uh, MC Sandman joined us in 2013, um, and we've been featured on Wall Street Journal. Uh, Am we've been, we worked with Amazon, uh, worked with the United Nations, uh, have a great relationship with NPR uh, and more. And question. Well, go. let's let's have Sam answer that question. Same yeah. question. How does it? How is it for you for your eight years plus? Oh yeah, <clears throat> I I first uh, you know started working with the ensemble uh, while I was still with a group called The Attic, and so we are a group of three MCs, and and uh, Juwan was already working with one of the MCs. Do that. And, and do that invited us to come on and and but he called him a producer and you know we were like okay well we had to come meet this producer and you know what i'm saying i you know i, I had no idea and who this person was and so we did this performance in on oakland and juan was there you know and and it was a total kind of a cold shock to me because juan came up to me he was like kind of dressed in like this zen monk garb and like you know literally bowed to me and i was like Really? This is who you were talking about, Juwan? Um, but he invited us over for tea, and then we ended up doing a song, uh, which was literally called, the song that we did with him was called First Song. Um, and it was such an enriching experience that, I, you know, uh, they offered for us to keep going, and so kept going. Um, and slow, slowly, uh, the other MCs dropped off, but, you know, I was kind of determined to keep going on with this because, you know, it was just so interesting to me, so different. Um, and 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 also challenging and helped me grow as an artist. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I would say we are the only hip hop infused group that has time change, meter change, not just odd meter, but meter change within one song. And I would I believe that you're the only MC in the world that has. <laughs> so kudos, Sam. Kudos to you. <laughs> Uh, we have a couple more questions. Roll, uh, no, one more question is rolling in. Um, how was it creating this album during a pandemic? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, uh, well, <laughs> I mean, one thing that we what we I can add in how was this album create? Like, how was it when we were recording? Is that a day before <laughs> a guy that was supposed to play like uh, five hours? Jesus. You know, Christ. you know five hours uh, yeah. in five hours he canceled on us yeah i was so, like cooking dinner and I, you know i had just got on the phone i was like okay 
and it didn't really hit me and then i just kind of took a deep breath yeah. called you on and we're both like all right who do we know who don't we know we contacted a few people and within about like an hour or two hours we we had a, a, a substitute and then i was able to eat my dinner and kind of not sleep <laughs> yeah so i think it was like that like a little bit of that happening throughout the recording process and not only that just the whole prep press process obviously it has been it has been very challenging mm -hmm. but also we're incredibly grateful because a lot of people are suffering not just you know in general obviously but performing arts is totally wiped out and i felt it was almost a privilege so i wanted to do a good job and to Justice for Yerba Winter Gardens Festival and Asian Art Museum, who actually had us in. It, like, no one was there. Pretty much, we were the only one that was filming them. And uh, Matt Bowman and then uh, Tosca oh, Rivola did mm -hmm. a wonderful job. And our musicians, they showed up and played, performed their heart out because mm -hmm. they needed to play. And I think that this kind of necessity comes through in the product. And uh, I hope you guys, whoever listens to this, feel better about the situation as as we have recording and writing this album. I'd like to also uh, point out our amazing dancers, uh, young Phil and Talise, um, that uh, really worked with us um, through the process. We've been working with young Phil now for about two years now. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to be working with him for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah. So maybe uh, all the people that we haven't we couldn't add, uh, shout, give individual shout out. We will have uh, credits rolling up. Yeah. So. Well, thank you so much for having us. Uh, thank you again, Asian Art Museum, uh, Yerba Buena Gardens Festival. Um, you guys have been great. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marcelo. Yeah. It's been amazing. Thank you. Thank what? You. Yeah. Well, yes, there. I can't do a heart. <laughs> there we go. You did yeah. it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is what the Koreans do. Like, oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I have to say, uh, I, I see, I've seen the videos several times now, and they're just deep. And each time I see them, I fall more in love with them. Sandman's lyrics, your composition, that, that soprano, like she's. Annie Smith. Annie Smith. What? Oh, what? <laughs> off the charts. Amazing. And of course, Matt and Tosca's beautiful filmmaking. I'm just, uh, I'm in love with it all. And, and I'm just so grateful to have uh, the opportunity. And thank you to Lulu Lucero and to, to Marcelo and your team for helping make this happen. You know, you brought it to us. Thank you, Indra, and thank you, uh, Juan and Christopher and Sandman. It's been uh, this has been a really great evening and inspiring, and um, and we can't wait to do it in person. <laughs> yeah, thank you, definitely. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, don't get famous before we can have you back because we can't afford you once you're famous. No, no, no. We're going to keep coming back. This is okay. our. Don't you forget know. your roots. <laughs> no, never, never, never. 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 Yeah. Please. Oh well, thanks to everyone who joined us tonight on YouTube and through Zoom. You know, please keep showing up for the arts. As, as Joanne said, it's really critical that we support artists in our community. It is, it's critical, to to their survival, and to our spiritual survival. <laughs> Thank you all. So much, and we're gonna play credits so you can see who played what instruments and filmmakers and special thanks. So we'll play those yeah. now. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Peace. Bye all.